Mike Kusha. Okay, Phil comes in averaging 119, and Mike comes in averaging 124. All right, so those are the four bowlers who will line it up here on Candlepin Skins this afternoon. As always, we're glad that you've taken time out of your weekend to uh, join us. We will have two games, of course, of Candlepin Bowling here during the hour. This is how it works here on Candlepin Skins. Our four bowlers compete individually, remember, one box at a time over two games. Now, in each box, a dollar value is assigned. That's the skin amount, the dollar amount. The high score in each box wins that dollar value. If the high score is tied in a box, then the dollar value carries over to the next box. The top two in total pinfall return week to week. That's how you can uh, make some money here by finishing second. The first three boxes of each game are worth $20. The next three are worth $25. $30 for the next three boxes, and the tenth box in each of our two games worth $75. So our four competitors are ready to go, and we will see candle pin skins right after these messages. Stay with us. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. The roll-off for the two qualifiers this week on Candlepin Skins was held at the Wright Brothers Sports Center in Holbrook. Phil Harris was the top finisher at 7.15. Big scores here. Mike Kusha at 7.04. Rich Hallberg with a 6.98. That'd be enough to win many roll-offs here on the wins, but he has to settle for third place at 6.98. Craig Holbrook fourth, Don Richmond fifth. So Rich, Craig, and Don uh, just missing. But Mike and Phil are here, and they are ready to go here on Candlepin Skins. Drop of seven for Mike. Five, eight, and nine left. And Phil drops six, two, four, seven, and nine. Piece of wood now rolling back in on... Uh, Bills. Tough wood here, too, for Mike, and completely blocks the triangle. And no luck on the wood for Phil. Ten box for Mike Kusha. And a ten for Phil Harris. Phil Harris uh, battling a sore neck sprained the night before the program uh, was talking to us about it beforehand but boy if, if you missed it when uh, Tom Morgan's streak of 13 consecutive shows ended a few weeks ago remarkable enough that he should be here for 13 weeks in a row but all of those 13 weeks Tom was competing with a very very sore right knee he has uh, ligament and cartilage damage he was also de uh, developing tendonitis in that right knee. He had been putting off arthroscopic surgery while he was still uh, alive here on the program, so he kept winning, or kept uh, coming back week after week and uh, kept putting off the surgery, so. Just makes the, uh, just adds to the legend, that's all. <laughs> Gary Harris. Casey with the spare for the skin here in the first. Two spares. Uh, two spares, that's, that's right. That's right, Gary and Tim, Gary we have a carryover. Yeah. Half Worcester. Worcester. Now Mike. And he'll have a little something to shoot at. One, two, and seven. Uh -oh, Watch out. Look out. <laughs> Whoa, that close to a spare for Mike. Uh oh. Oh my. Phil with a two box. Mike will take another ten. Now Tim will fill his spare in the first on lane four. Then Gary will do the same on lane three. Oh boy, boy. That ball was straight down the middle of the lane, right on the head pin. That was full two by Gary Casey. Gary back for his fourth appearance. Tim for his second. A little spare. And a possible skim, unless Gary makes a great shot here. Nope. 
So give that $40 skin the first of the day to Tim Susie. And it'll be a 10 for Gary Casey. And Gary is right in his usual spot, second place. <laughs> Settling in after two frames. Third box worth $25. Good look at Mike Kusha. From Hanover, Mass. And a half Worcester left for Mike. Phil Harris shooting at the four horsemen. Mike Kusha, by the way, uh, here in the red shirt, works for the U.S. Post Office, but you were telling me he has a little uh, interesting side job. Uh, yes, he was telling me that he uh, does some scouting, baseball scouting for UMass. Spare for Phil Harris. Bouncing back from that two box. Oh, great shot. That is a 10 box for Mike Kusha, but what a 10 it was. Here's the spare for Phil Harris. So the spare leads for the skin. Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. Tri-State Megabucks. Gary Casey. Just a little full on that 1-3 pocket. Tim's Phil, six on his spare in the second. And oh, no. that close. Just banged everything off the left side wall, came across, but oh, nice bid there by Tim to make it three in a row. That gives the skin to Phil Harris. $20. 10 for Gary. 10 for Tim. Take a look and see what happened at Tim's spare attempt. Wow. Well, the ball took the six, but uh, he needs some help on the 10. Phil Harris working on a spare. Big first ball, nine drop. Everything but the six spin. Uh-oh, oh. sliding by. Tomorrow at noon, here on the Winds of New England, we will have the championship match of our annual mixed doubles tournament from Park Place Lanes. That'll be on Candlepin Stars and Strikes tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England. Four tens for Mike Kusha. Pinning well, but no marks yet. And of course, next Saturday, here on Candlepin Skins, the top two bowlers in total pinfall today will be back. And they will face two competitors from the North Shore area roll-off, which, as of the moment, has not been held. So we don't know who's coming in next week yet. Oh, Spare boy. for Tim Susie. <laughs> and he thought he went too far left. Second piece behind it helped him, and nice shot by Gary Casey. Create the carryover with spares, and that makes the fifth box worth $50. Mike Kusha has, oh, oh big wow. He had four consecutive 10 boxes to start the match, and now a strike. Oh. That close to create the carryover. It's two nine drops in a row for Phil Harris. Phil has gone spare nine drop, nine drop since that uh, two box back in the second. Oh, 
Gets this one for the spare. And here's the strike by Mike Kucha. So Mike will get $50 unless Gary or Tim can throw a strike here. Each of them working on spares. Gary missed the head pin, takes six. Oh boy. And Tim gets the head pin, but only gets three. <laughs> <laughs> One, five, and nine. And Mike Kucha gets the skim, $50. Nine for Gary Casey. Uh-oh, five box for Tim Soucy. So, two of the bowlers have had bad boxes already, and as a result of that, we have a close match. Tim Soucy at 63, Gary Casey just two pins back, or rather at 70, and uh, Gary Casey 16 pins back in second. Mike and Phil each with spares up as we continue here on Candlepin Skins. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Well, the scores that I mentioned before the break were the correct scores. They've been uh, entered as such now on the computer. So the next time you see the computer, you'll see the correct scores. It is, in fact, Tim Soucy by two pins over Gary Casey, 63-61, with Mike and Phil both working on marks here. Phil throws another nine drop oh. and a double strike for Mike Kusha. Wow. That's three nine drops in a row for Phil Harris. He's converted the last two for spares. And here's the double strike for Mike. Those two strikes, there was no doubt about either one of them. And I said at the top of the game, both of these bowlers can throw strikes. And you saw Mike and Phil is just missing strikes by all those nine pin drops. Oh, look out. There's oh, another strike. Tim takes that skin away from Mike. <laughs> so with the carryovers, the uh, carryover with strikes, the uh, seventh box will now be worth $55. And here's the strike by Tim Soucy that created the carryover. The five and eight, and the five topples back into the eight pin for the strike. And now Mike Kusha will fill the double strike. The computer has now uh, been corrected, so those are the accurate scores. And you can see how close it is as Mike and Phil are gaining ground quickly here. Oh boy. And after the double strike, just two for Mike Kusha. Seven on the spare for Phil. So Mike loses the effect, really, of the double strike, getting just 39 pins in those two boxes because of that first fill ball. That first fill ball can really... Uh, hurt you if you don't take full advantage of it because as in that case you don't get the effect of the double strike it just looks like two regular marks back to back so a pair of nines up there for Mike and Phil but they have each made up ground Gary Casey a big break there two and seven going down Tim Soucy on a strike and he gets a little break kicking out the eight pin on the back of the diamond. Yeah, the shoot at the triangle than the diamond. Right now we have a possible carryover with nines, but we could have a carryover with spares here. Let's see. There's one of them as Gary converts. No. 
Tim drives it right through the middle. So that $55 skin goes to Gary Casey. And Tim Susie is at 90 through seven, so he is in the lead, but only by two pins over Mike Kusha and only by four over Phil Harris. And of course, Gary Casey is right there too with that mark. $30 skin here in the eighth. Um, this time an eight pin drop by Phil Harris. I think that two box got Phil angry. <laughs> I guess so. This time he's gonna shoot at the 7-10 though. A couple pieces of wood in front of the seven, another one just to the left of those two pieces, but he's gonna have something. The ball's gonna fly right on him. So. Ooh, oh, didn't get enough of the wood. See what Mike can make of this. Three, five, six, ten for the spare. Oh boy, three, five, and ten, and left six. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> ten for Phil Harris. And the nine for Mike. So the skin is wide open. And so is this match right now. Tim Susi, a little full on the head pin. He gets away with it, though. Gary Casey now on a spare. And he will take seven. Advantage Tim, though, with those three pins up with a piece of, oh, he's going to cap the wood. Ooh. No. He knew it, too. As soon as, soon as he let it go. Parrot, oh, we got one ten up there. One of these bowlers has to <laughs> knock down these pins, one of these pins for a carryover, and it's going to be Tim. I'll tell you what, you're not going to believe how close the total pinfall is going to be after eight boxes here. Check it out on the scoreboard now. Tim Susie leads with 100, then Mike, Su Mike Kusha at 97, Phil Harris at 96, Gary Casey at 94. Six pins separating the four bowlers here. And we have a $60 ninth box now. Mike Kusha just slipped by the head pin, just missed it. A oh. near strike for Phil Harris as he throws his fourth nine drop of this game. One, three, seven, eight for Mike. No, again, it's just sliding to the left of the head pin. Phil Harris for the spare. No. Nope. Missing to the left as well. Nine for Mike. His third in a row. And a nine for Phil. So it'll take a 10 to win the skin, <laughs> at least. Gary looking for one more pin to go, but he'll be stuck with the six, seven. And just the three pin for Tim Susie. Make it the seven and nine for Gary Casey. Which makes it tougher. <laughs> uh, nothing it's happening there with the wood. Make it tougher for a 10 now, too. Knocks the wood out, doesn't take either one of those pins. And well, remember, my, nine my. leads for the skin, remember that. Well, we got a carryover, two nines, so. Right. And it's still there. It's going to be a tough nine for, or a tough. Wow. We'll Five carry boxes. those nines over. <laughs> Two tens on the eighth box carryover, and now two nines in the ninth. And now there's only four pins separating first and fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Could this end in a four-way tie? <laughs> that makes this tenth box worth $135. Four horsemen to the right for Phil Harris. The one, three, six. Piece of wood in between the six and the ten. Off target is Mike. Phil wants to catch the head pin in this ball to have a chance. Looks good. Yes. Fourth spare for Phil Harris. Yeah. 
And a nine box for Mike. So he'll finish game one with a 115. Here's Phil Harris's spare. It gives him the lead for the skin. Big carry over here, $135. He's also looking for a big fill to get himself the lead after one game of this two-game match. And almost identical shot. Four horsemen again. He'll take six for 121. So Gary or Tim will have to throw a spare to create a carryover, or a strike could win the skin. Unless both of them throw strikes, of course. Everybody is on the tote board for skins already. Oh, going to be a tough spare for Tim. Two, four, seven, and six. No. Nope. Not quite as difficult for <laughs> Gary. Five and nine. So Tim will be open in the 10th. And so will Gary. So give that $135 skin to Phil Harris. And he will, in fact, have the lead after game one. As we check the scoreboard, very, very close. Ten pins from first till fourth. Phil Harris is in first. Gary Casey in fourth at 111. Mike Kusha and Tim Susi in between. Looks like a good battle for game two. We'll be back on Candlepin Skins after these words. Everybody's won some money so far here on Candlepin Skins, but Phil Harris has won most of it, $155. Thanks mostly to that big spare in the 10th that not only gave him the biggest skin of the day, but also the lead in the match in total pinfall. Gary and Mike and Tim have each won two skins. So everybody on the board, and we get set for game two. And by the way, we want to point out that the score was corrected. Gary Casey did have a 10 in that last box, so he is at 112, not 111. So only nine pins separating first place from fourth place as we start game two. And they're still falling for Mike Kucha. <laughs> he's just a, a four pin. Yeah, he'll take that nine pin drop. $20 skin to start this game. Mike hoping to start it with a spare, and he does. And Phil almost converted one. Well, that close, left the nine pin, but threw a pretty good looking ball. I figured the wood would carry all the way through for the nine, but didn't happen for him. Nine it is for Phil. Gary Casey, the left-hander. On lane four here at Pilgrim in Haverhill. Oh, look out. Big nine drop for Tim Susie. Chance for a carryover. It's a little bit of a roadblock there, though, on that single pin. Although he comes a little bit from left to right, so he might be out far enough to get by it. Oh, he uses the wood. <laughs> So the carry over with spares. The second box will be worth $40. Gary Casey hoping to work the high-low jack here. Well, missed the high, got the low in the jack <laughs> for nine bucks. So Mike and Tim with spares create the carryover. And Phil will throw first over on lane four. Oh, great hit. Oh, my. How is that not a strike? Everything but the four pin. And Mike on a spare, just six. Well, Phil turned that one over. That's the uh, third single pin that Phil has missed. He's had a lot of them, too. That was his fifth nine drop of the match. That's a lot of nine drops in 12 boxes. <laughs> Got it that time for the 10. Mike Kusha had a very unusual game in that first game, Dan. He had four 10 boxes, then a double strike, and then four oh, nine nice. boxes. Gets a 10 there. So we have a pair of 10s up with Gary and sti uh, Tim still to come. A promotional consideration has been provided. 
to Candlepin Skins by Romano's Pizza and Subs. Located on Primrose Street in Haverhill, right next door to Pilgrim Lanes. Stop by if you're into do some bowling or in the neighborhood. Romano's Pizza and Subs. Tim gets nine on his spare. Chance for another one. Remember, we got, just got a pair of tens up there for the skin. A couple of chances for Marks here. Tim covers his. And Gary does the same for another carryover. I don't know about you people at home, but I like to see that. I like to see yep. carryovers. Yep. The no money question. build. Strategy each bowler takes as the money grows. $60 now in the third. In this case, these bowlers can start looking at total pitfall a lot earlier than normal <laughs> because it's so close. Seven pin drop for Mike. Three, six, ten left. Oh, not quite enough to almost. carry the 10. <laughs> oh, nice spare for Phil Harris, though. And the 10 for Mike. So Phil Harris gets his first mark of game two. But look at this. Watch the head pin. Get down right into the seven pin. No hesitation at all. Well, Gary and Tim both working on the marks. Bears, that is Gary first. Pulled it. Just five. And Tim gets six on his. Spare leads for the skin, but it's going to take a good shot here by somebody. Did I say five? It was a four fill, obviously, for Gary Casey. Didn't see the sleeper in the back, the eight pin. This for the carryover or the skin is Phil's. No. Oh. $60 skin for Phil Harris. As he continues to pile up the cash. He's up to $215 now. Gary takes nine. Tim takes 10. At the bottom of the screen on the computer scoreboard here, the cumulative two game totals. So Tim Susie in the lead, but Phil Harris with a spare working could take the lead with a strike here on this spare. And he's going to have to re-rack as one of the pins came down on lane four. So a nine will tie him for the lead and a strike would give him the lead by one. But really, as you said, Dan, it's still within a mark or two either way. That's you could right. go from first to fourth very quickly or the reverse. Let's see, that was a spare, but just a three Bill, three and a half, three and three quarters. <laughs> it's going to be three. And Mike is going to have a split also. Yeah, trying to kick out the 10 pin, but he's got two, four, seven as well as that 10. Oh, oh what a great my. shot. Oh, yes. You know, it almost looked like he cut that too fine and it was going to miss the 10 pin altogether. I think it hit the sidewall and then on the way back it got the 10 pin. Either way, worth another look. We'll find out exactly what happened on that spare. Well, I guess we won't be able to get another look at it, but it was a heck of a shot. Hope you saw it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. a strike. Possibly to take the skin away. Sir. Gary takes it away. Uh, wow. <laughs> Here's the first strike, the one that Tim Susie threw. The one he thought he won the skin with. <laughs> Ten pin goes, but Gary right back before the pins had a chance to settle down in the other lane. He throws his own strike, create the carryover. So a $50 fifth box now, and Mike on his spare gets seven. Two in a row. Oh, he thought he had it. I thought he had it. The crowd did. Just a little heavy on the four pin. Caused him to miss the seven. And 
And it's still there. Nines for both Mike and Phil. And now Gary and Tim come up, each working on strikes. Double strike could mean a lot the way these scores are right now. Absolutely. Just a pair of nines for the skin as well. Of course, Mike Kusha has already thrown a double strike. That was back in game one. I like Tim's chances for the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Although the wood's rolling back for Gary. Gary might have a shot at this. The two, eight, and ten. Let's see. You now he's going to have the two pin. Slid by it. So it's an eight fill for Gary on his strike. For the skin. Yes. $50 skin for Tim Susi and spare on strike as well. And nine box for Gary Casey. So a good time to check the scoreboard here with five boxes to go. Look down at the bottom of the screen. Tim Susi in the lead with 189 and working on a spare. So he has the advantage right now, but wide open for second between Mike, Phil, and Gary, all within seven pins of each other. And we'll be back to finish it out here on Candlepin Skins after these words. <laughs> Phil Harris, box number six, worth $25. Oh boy, right through the middle. One, five, and nine. It's happened a few times to a few of the bowlers today. Nope. Oh, oh what how a about try. it? Oh my. The spread eagle plus the eight pin and almost for Mike. Is Phil 58 through six? 72 for Mike. Here's what happened on Mike's spare attempt. Watch this shot. Wow. Just clears everything out, the four, seven, and eight, but leaves the two. All right, now Tim Susi working on a spare here. Hmm. A chance to put himself out in front. I mean, he's already out in front, but increases lead. Just a five, Phil. You know, he's, he's not a shoe in yet. 10 leads for this skin right now. A couple of splits up there. Well, Tim has a decision here to try to get just get two or do you try to go for the 10 to tie the skin depending on what Gary does. Yeah, he might, he might try to get two now and let Gary take care of the time for the skin. Yeah, there's the eight for Tim and now if Gary can get these two we'll have a carryover. Watch out. Uh, oh, he got it. <laughs> Did it the hard way, but he got it done for the carryover. Well, let's take another look. Comes from all the way from the left side wall back into the second piece of wood for the six and ten. So that makes this seventh box worth $55, and we're going to have a lot to pay attention to here coming down the stretch because this is still very close, especially for second place. Uh, Tim Susie has a 15 pin lead over Mike Kusher right now in second. But Mike, Phil, and Gary all still very bunched together. Oh boy, what you don't want is a bad frame. Two, five, and ten for Phil Harris with a wood could go. He's got to have a two. Decision time for Mike. What do we do? He's going for the head pin. It's a gutsy try there. It really is. It's just a six box. An eight for Phil Harris. Stays ahead of Phil by six. Gary can climb within two without a mark if he were to throw a ten box. Obviously wants to put a mark up though. Take over the lead for second. Oh. <laughs> Punches out the one, five, and eight. Now Tim. And he will have, well, at least something to shoot at here. It's just an eight box up there for the skin. Oh, my. 
twice in a row we've almost seen that shot made. This time on the other side. Well, spare for the skin for Tim Susi. $55 worth. And more important, it puts a mark up where no one else has one already in the lead. So yeah, more and more, it looks like the battle is going to be for second. second. right? Nine for Gary. So again, uh, check this attempt for the spare for Gary Casey. The opposite side of Mike Bush's shot before where he left the deuce. Gary left the three and the nine. Phil's going to have the two and five left for a spare. And Mike is going to have, let's see, oh boy, big break. Four, seven, eight are clear out of there. Leaves himself just a six and ten. Watch the cap of the wood. Watch out. No. Oh, not quite. <laughs> oh, and Mike makes a big mistake. He had some room to play that wood. And he's talking to himself. He knows he had some a room for error to the left a little bit, but Phil takes nine. Mike ten. Seven pins ahead of Phil. Gary could leapfrog them both into second place here with a mark. Has the advantage, if you want to call it that, of bowling after Mike and Phil. Tim will fill his spare first. Well off target, just five. Make it six. Make it. Did it stay six or yes, did he get another six. one? Okay. Big nine pin drop for Gary though. Leaves the five pin. Oh, the five for the skin. He knocks down this for the spare, but also chance to take over sole possession of second place. Got it. Big shot. Wins the $30 skin. And a nine box for Tim Susie. Final two frames. Both Mike and Phil need marks now. Oh, and Mike just a half Worcester. And Phil, Phil just won. <laughs> wow, a quarter of Worcester. <laughs> just the three pin. Wow. Oh, that close to a spare. Ten for Mike. All Mike and Phil can hope for now is that Gary Casey doesn't mark again and maybe doesn't get a big fill on this spare. Gary could put himself in a driver's seat here with a big fill and a mark. I'm sure that's going through his mind right now before he delivers this ball on his spare in the ninth. Looks like a pretty good ball, but just the five. Ten boxes up for the skin. $30 skin here in the ninth. We're going to be keeping a close eye on this uh, total pinfall picture, too. Oh. oh, there's the spare. Well, he got only the five, Phil, but he made up for it by getting another spare. So that still leaves Gary Casey in the driver's seat coming down to the 10th. Let's see if Tim can convert this. Almost. Give the skin to Gary Casey in the ninth. He's up to $115 now. And a nine box for Tim Susie. Here's the spare that won the skin for Gary Casey. That's a tough shot. You see that a lot. You see that leave a lot. But you see how it benefits him. He's already in second by two pins ahead of Mike, plus he has the benefit of the spare fill. Mike, Mike needs a mark. Oh, so, so does Phil, and he throws a strike. Wow. 
Phil with a head start on the last skin of the day, too, worth $75. Mike must convert this. No. Does not. Well, Mike Kusha had a very frustrating day. He had a double strike in the first game and just two spares here in the second game, so only four marks in all. And he will finish with a 107, a two-game total of 222. But here's the strike by Phil Harris that keeps him alive. And you really have to almost throw another one. And he will have to throw another one to have any chance. Pretty good ball. Oh, there it goes. There it oh, goes. It He's still alive. How many times have we seen this happen this year on skins, Dan? Where guys needing strikes in the last box throw them. It's never over till it's over. Right here, it's just a solid nine pin drop. And then all of a sudden, piece of wood comes rolling with enough power to knock that 10 pin over. He still needs seven or eight to put a little pressure on Gary. Oh, that was a light hit, and he gets six for a 108 and a two game total of 229. But as you see, Gary already at 215. Yeah, he needs uh, to give Phil a break on this fill ball on the spare. And we saw Jeff Atkins almost pull off a miraculous finish with a double strike in the 10th last week. This week it's Phil Harris. Of course, Phil leads for this last skin of the day is worth $75. Tim is safely in. Here's the big fill ball. And that, I believe. Well, it doesn't clinch it, but that's 109 and six for no, 115. He needs, a couple more no, pins. he needs three more pins. And how about this for a spare? <laughs> oh, why not? Why not? A nine box to get. Yes, there it is. Gary Casey needed a nine box to get second place. Where else would Gary Casey finish? That's <laughs> four weeks in a row he's going to finish second. And he'll take a 10. So the last skin of the day goes to Phil Harris with the strike. And here's that spare for Tim Soucy. Ball goes up, comes back down in the 10 pin, knocks down the six, and a couple pieces of wood roll over and get the seven, just like it says in the book. Right. <laughs> By two pins. Oh, big strike on spare in the 10th. 142 for Tim Soucy, a two game total of 256. Gary Casey checks in at 231 to finish second for the fourth week in a row. He will advance. Phil Harris just two pins short, and Mike Kusha had a very frustrating day, but still only finished nine pins out of the money. We'll be back to wrap it up on Candlepin Skins after these words. We are back on Candlepin Skins for the second week in a row. Tim Soucy finishes on top of the total pinfall list at 256. And for the fourth week in a row, Gary Casey has got this second place thing down pat. He edges out both Phil Harris and Mike Kusha. Both Gary and Tim will be back again next week. As far as the uh, prize money, even though Phil finished third, he finishes on top of the prize money list with $290, including the uh, double strike in the 10th to win that last skin. Everybody else on the board as well, uh, Mike Kusha bringing up the rear. But uh, the story again, really, uh, Tim Soucy finishing first. Again, solid performance. And Gary Casey again coming in second. Yeah, it's Gary said after the show that it was, uh, he's getting a little nervous. They're getting a little closer. Last week it was Jeff Atkins throwing a double strike, and this week Phil Harris. All right, the next uh, time we see you here on Candlepin Skins, uh, Tim Soucy and Gary Casey will be back again. They'll be facing two contenders from the North Shore roll-off area. Don't forget, tomorrow on Stars and Strikes at 12 noon, we'll have the championship match in our annual mixed doubles tournament. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend.